Well, I want to speak to you for a few uh, moments, just a few moments, about the goodness uh, of God. Anybody believe that God is good? I said one more time. Anybody believe that God is good? You really believe that God is good? See, it takes faith that if you're in a certain situation, that you can still look at that situation and say, but God is good. How many people God ever brought you out of anything? God ever brought you out of anything? And God ever brought you out of any deep stuff? So then now you're looking at the situation you're in right now and saying, <laughs> if he did it before, I know he could do it again. Thank you, Jesus. Well, I just want to talk to you just for a little bit, if that's all right. Out of uh, Luke 23, I want to talk to you out of Luke 23 a little bit and a couple other scriptures, and I believe you're going to catch the message very quickly. But in Luke 23 and verse 32, I want you to see something there. Now, at any moment, we could jump around and, and shout. but I want you to know something when you leave. <laughs> I don't want you to shout the word right out of you. But I want you to know something and take it, be able to use it and apply it. Something that's going to change your life. Are you ready? In Luke 23, I want to read a few verses. Uh, in verse 32, um, there it says, There were also two others, criminals, led with him to be put to death. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right hand and one on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. And they divided his garments and cast lots. Then I want, to, I want you to see something in verse 38. In verse 38, it says, uh, and the inscription, inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other saying, other uh, answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you were under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me. Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. That's heavy. In Matthew 24, don't you see three verses there? Matthew 24, in verse. 40 says, then two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, you have a choice to make. I want you to look at somebody else and tell them again, you have a choice to make. I believe his word is already blessed. Amen. Amen. There was uh, a song, not was a song, but there is a song that 
I learned to love uh, along the way. And uh, that song is, uh, I'm not going to sing. Don't worry. I'm not going to sing. No, no, no. Mm -mm. <laughs> Get thee behind me. <laughs> I know my assignment. <laughs> Amen. Lord, I lift your name on high. Amen. And the part that still grips me is you came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. The story of Jesus Christ is the greatest story ever told. It's the greatest story ever told. It's an amazing story because uh, it involves all of us. It's not about just a person in a far off land and has nothing to do with us, but it involves all of us. Amen? The Messiah, the Lamb of God, it's, it's, there are many great stories, but none like this. You know a great story? Superman is a great story. It's a great story. But an alien being that comes from another planet lands here all alone. <laughs> Has power that comes from the sun. Goes around solving everybody's problems. Falls in love with a bride. And is going around saving everybody. It's a great story. There's one problem with that story. Otherwise, it would seem like that's just like Christ's story. Except Christ said this, greater things what you do. So you can't do, you can't leap tall buildings in a single bound. You can't run faster than a locomotive. Superman doesn't share his power. You got to wait on Superman. But with Jesus, you can be delivered right now. So I love, I love to tell uh, the story. It's a wonderful song. I love to tell the story. To be my theme in glory. To tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Amen? Nobody loves you the way Jesus does. There's some people that love you and they say they love you and they love you with as much as what's in them to love you. Uh, but there's not many people who would uh, sacrifice themselves for you. There were some people who would dare to help you. <laughs> There'd be some people who would dare to assist you. Everybody understand what I mean? But not many people who would jump in front of a whip for you. There's not many. There might be a few, uh, but not many. Right? Most of us want to know what we're getting signed up for. Amen? So, this beautiful story, what it is, it's, just, it's the divine romance unfolding before our, our eyes between our Lord and uh, us, his people. Look at somebody and say, God is into you bad. He's into you bad. He's into you bad. He loves you. He loves you. It's the divine romance. Amen? And so God has turned the world upside down. He's turned the world upside down to get you back. to get you back. I want you to understand that he reached past justice. He reached past righteousness to get you back to him. Amen? To provide a pathway that leads back to who he is. I want you to understand that, that his getting you back, him wanting to get you back, we look at Jesus many times as Jesus is the bridge back to God. But you got to understand that Jesus was also the bridge that got God back to us. Amen. I'm not saying that we're greater than God. But this covenant is a one-sided covenant that says, I love you. 
and I'm going to do what it takes to get you. We're the ones with the choice. But God is so committed to his covenant that for him it's not a choice. So he keeps you. Even while you're hurting him, harming him, and offending him, blaspheming him, he keeps keeping you. Can anybody just say thank you, God, for that? So then along with that bridge, God also sends his Holy Spirit across that bridge to be in you. He sends his mercy across that bridge. He sends justification and redemption and salvation across that bridge. I want you to look at somebody and say, you have a choice. You have a choice. And if you consider the dynamic, the dramatic display of the crucifixion, the death, and the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, then the love of God towards us becomes evident. If you, com- if you consider the visual of what all those things uh, looked, looked like. But however, the world, uh, before the world was framed, Jesus, the lamb, was already prepared. Before the world was framed, there was already a plan that was in place. Amen? And your name then was written in this book, this wonderful book of life. Your name is already scrolled in there. Your name was scrolled in there before you were born. I want you to receive that. Your name was already in that book before you you were born, before you thought that you chose God. He already wrote your name in the book. This is why you keep going through cycles and circles, finding your way back to him. Because your name's in the book. Look at somebody and say, your name's in the book. And so I want to tell you this, that Jesus, our Lord, if you consider the story, you consider Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane and the trial that took place uh, there and all that he went through with hemohydrosis and uh, his body going through so much stress because of what he was going to face that the sweat glands got confused and started sending blood out instead of sweat and there was blood dripping where he's praying. Can you get that picture? The blood was already being shed while he was making up his mind to go. It's already being shed. And so then now he is strengthened. He is strengthened by ministering angels and uh, while his disciples are sleeping. <laughs> the same ones that said, I'll ride or die for you. They're sleeping. And then here comes Judas to betray him with a kiss on his cheek to betray him and he's arrested he's arrested he's arrested and he's taken and he's he's beaten and he begins to be beaten all night long amen our lord was beaten isaiah 53 and 10 says yet it pleased the lord to bruise him it pleased the lord to bruise him amen he gets uh from one uh situation to the other and he's um He's ridiculed and tortured. Doesn't say a word. Gets before Herod and gets, uh, they begin to joke on him and and he's beaten again. Gets before Pilate. Pilate doesn't want to have anything to do with the situation. While everyone is yelling, crucify him. They have a discussion about the truth. Pilate says, well, what is truth? Jesus before that saying that he came to bear witness of the truth. And everyone who is of the truth will hear my voice. Pilate says, what is the truth? (laughs) But to please the crowd, he scourges him. And if you've seen the movie, The Passion, then you begin to get the image. I'm not going to put those up for you about how his back became bloody, pieces of his flesh torn from his body. See, now I know a lot of us want to be excited right now, but I want you to get this story. And he's beaten and beaten until the guards have to switch hands with each other because they're getting tired of beating him. 
there's blood splattering in different places. This same blood is the same blood that's washing our sins right now. As the devil stands before God accusing the brethren, here's the blood coming from the other side of the courtroom, covering each sin as the devil spits it out. Can anybody thank God for the blood? So he was tortured and he was whipped. And Isaiah 53 and 5 says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. But even while all that was happening, he was still uh, being ridiculed. He was still being humiliated. He was spat upon. Now, there's a whole lot of things you can do to a person. Let me just speak to all the men in the room for a second. I mean, if a guy says something to you out of his mouth wrong, you have to ask a question, who are you talking to? Maybe that's what Brother Curtis would say. <laughs> I don't know. Me and me and James, we might, have, we might say something different. We might not ask a question. We might say, you ain't talking to me. <laughs> but could you imagine uh, that you've done nothing wrong? And you've been beaten, and you say, okay, I've been beaten, and okay, the stripes, okay, by the stripes I'm healed. This is for the healing of the nations. I'll take these stripes. But then the moment that this person that you're dying for builds up saliva in their mouth to then spit in your face, I don't know about you. If I was Jesus, a legion of angels would have just came down. The plan would have been over. I, God didn't give me strength for spit. But then here it is. Amen? The Bible says in Isaiah 53 and 3 that he is despised and rejected by men. He, he was despised and we did not esteem him. But what I want you to know is that Jesus was on assignment. He was on assignment, and he was doing it all for us. Amen? He was doing it all for us. Doing it all for us. Considering everything that you were ever going to go through and doing it for you. Amen? If you were the only person that said that, Jesus, I'll accept you, he would have still went to the cross for just you. Amen? I want you to understand something. In Hebrews 2 and 14, it says, Inasmuch then as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For indeed, he does not give aid to angels, <laughs> but he does give aid to the seed of Abraham. Amen. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? Now, some of you might have missed that in just that moment. I want you to look at somebody and say, you are the seed of Abraham. You are the seed of Abraham. Of Abraham, but one thing I want you to understand is this that Jesus, Jesus didn't just die, he didn't only die for you. Amen. He was also raised for us. He was raised because of our justification. He was raised so we could live. The song puts it like this: that because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Anybody grateful that he lives? 
You're alive because he lives. You're going from glory to glory because he lives. Every gift that's in you is flourishing because he lives. Every blessing that you had, every blessing that's resting over you, every blessing that's coming after this moment is because he lives. Because he lives. Oh, my God. When you think about all that you've been through, different situations and how God keeps bringing you out over and over and over again, even though you're putting yourself back in it and God brings you out anyway, he's doing it because Jesus lives. We don't serve a dead Savior. We serve a risen Savior that lives. Amen? That lives, and not only does he live, but he's at the right hand of the Father making intercession for you. God, help him, God. Send your spirit, God. Father, I know what it feels like to be ridiculed, God. Get, have their back, comfort them when they need you. You understand what I mean? Nobody can pray for you like Jesus can pray for you. Nobody understands you like Jesus understands you. He puts himself in your skin so he can know what it feels like. So when he goes to pray, see, here's the thing. Let me just sit down on this part. If I haven't been through divorce, I can't pray for you the same way if you're going through divorce and I haven't been through it, I can't pray the same way. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Oh, I can believe God for you, but the kind of fervency and faith, if I have been through what you've been through, and then pray. Yeah. Now we got something going. You understand? I need somebody praying for me who's been through something, who's seen some things, and who's uh, have had some failures along. The, because if I have failed and you have never failed, you can't pray for me. If you have been, if you haven't been humiliated and I have been humiliated, how do you pray for me? But Jesus, who suffered all temptation, been ridiculed, been beaten, been divorced. See, say, now nah, I know y'all don't want to understand that the bride of Christ walked away from Jesus. Y'all don't understand. That's why he came. Everybody understand that? I ain't talking about Mary Magdalene. I ain't talking about none of that. What I'm talking about is God, his bride, walked away from him, experienced some divorce, and here comes Jesus to provide a way back. This is why in heaven there will be the marriage, the wedding supper. Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't, just a few people reading their Bibles. But here comes the bridegroom who has prepared his bride. Amen? Has gone back to get her. We talking about the church, y'all. We talking about you. Jesus praying at the right hand of the Father. Amen? Praying for all of you. But now Jesus, through all of this situation, through everything that we saw, is that Jesus was crucified between two convicts. Amen? Now, I'm not saying you're convicts, but Curtis, I need you to sit right here. I'm not saying you're a convict, but brother, uh, Elder Mike, I need you to sit right here. Why don't you do it quickly? Come on down here, okay? And uh, Chavis, I need your help, too. I want you to stand right there in the middle. I want you to understand what is happening in that scene when Jesus is crucified. What I want you to really understand, you face that way. When, when, what, 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 I want you to understand that, that Jesus didn't love you this much. Amen? He didn't love you this much. What I understand is Jesus must have loved you. What I'm saying is that's a whole lot of love. That's a whole lot of love for Jesus to love you this much. And while he's on the cross and he's between two convicts, people who uh, should be there, you have one that is on his left, and the other one is on his right. And Jesus, who has committed no crime, is in the same situation. 
So then here is a, a, a one of them on one side who seems like they might be like one of us. And the other one on the other side that seems like they are also like one of us. And then Jesus doesn't seem like he's quite like one of us, but we're all in the same situation. And so one says that, Jesus, why don't you save yourself and us, get you and us off the cross. But Jesus understood his assignment, and that was not the plan or the purpose. And so then the other says that we are supposed to be here. As a matter of fact, we deserve to be here, and we are getting exactly what it is that we deserve. Don't you even fear God? Jesus has done nothing wrong. Then he says to Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And while on the cross being convicted guilty of what he has done, Jesus doesn't say to him, now first tell me all the details. Of he doesn't even tell him to repent. He looks at him and says that you'll be with me today in paradise because all it takes is to accept him. Once somebody say you have a choice to make. And so then here they are all in the same situation. And one of them here receives the grace of God. Here's this person who rejects the grace of God. And in the middle is Jesus who is the grace of God. But they're all in the same situation. Here is one who accepts Jesus and attains life and then is invited into the resurrection. Here is one who refuses Jesus, loses life, and misses the resurrection. And here is Jesus who is in the middle, and he is the resurrection, and he is the life. But they were all in the same situation. Here's one that is on this side who dies to his sin. Here's one on this side who dies because of his sin. And here is Jesus in the middle who dies for both their sins, but they were all in the same situation. What I'm trying to explain to you is that Jesus right now wants to come into your situation and you have a choice to make. What I'm trying to explain to you is there is victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. Some of y'all don't want to walk with me on that one. He loved me before I even knew who he was. And all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Somebody just take a moment and just praise God. Can you just praise God? Can you just put your hands together really quick? Come on, just take 30 seconds and just, just praise God. Just thank God. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Somebody say it again, thank you, Jesus. Come on, if you're grateful, one more time, just say, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. There's just one more thing I want to tell you. If you could take your seats, one more thing. People don't talk about this anymore. I'm not exactly sure why. What if Jesus came to get his church on a Sunday morning. Think about that for a moment. What if the horns blew, the trumpets blew, Jesus cracked the sky, took his home, 
and it was Sunday morning. I wonder, would this building be empty? Or would it not be empty? Would people look one to the other person? I wonder, while the message was going forward, Jesus came back to get his church. And you heard the mic fall. You see that sitting next to you. And here you are. Wondering in that moment, what's happening? And then you look at your brother, and your brother's not there. You, you knew he was there a second ago in the twinkling of an eye ago. But you're here, and you turn around. And maybe you see a few others still here. Husband's clothes laying, wife present. Teenager's clothes laying, father present. Woman pregnant in a twinkling no longer. Mother's nursing her baby. And there's a blanket, little socks, pulls her arms in because the baby has been taken. So I don't know, maybe as a father or mother, you run to where your children are because there's some disaster happening here. You run downstairs and you look at all the clothes laying on the floor. You bump into some other parents looking for their children. And in this moment, you realize did it happen? People don't talk about this anymore because everybody want to praise Jesus and get rich. But this could be any moment. Could you imagine being left behind? Matthew 24, verses 40 through 42 says that there were two in a field, one taken and one left. It says there were two women working together, one taken and one left. You have a choice to make. You have a choice to make. So here's what I'd like you to do in this moment. Could you all stand? Is that all right? I want you to search your heart right now. Search your heart. If there's any doubt whatsoever, any doubt, as to where you would spend your eternity, if you've heard this message and you relate it to the humble servant, the humble convict who wanted to be remembered. They just want to be remembered. Maybe you've walked away from God. But Jesus is the bridge back to him. And here comes the challenge because now it becomes, well, if I walk down there, what are people going to think? 
who cares? Because it's not about what they think. It's about what God thinks. I want, to, I want you to challenge yourself right now. If there's any doubt whether or not this would be you or you would be sitting in your seat on Sunday morning if Jesus was to come, I want you to forget about everything and just walk down here. Just walk down here. If there's any doubt whatsoever, any inkling of a doubt. Thank you, Jesus. Normally, we would say here that people close your eyes and forget that. Any doubt at all. Now, here's what's going to happen in this moment. The devil's going to look at you and say, don't go down there. You got it under control. Everything is fine. You don't have to come down here in order to get saved. You don't have to come down here to get your heart together. If there's any doubt, just come down here. Don't listen to what the devil might be trying to whisper to you right now. People are going to think that you're doing something wrong. People are going to think that you've been living some kind of other life. Forget that. Just come down here. Thank you, Jesus. If along the way you had some missteps, mistakes with God in such a way that maybe if he was to come this Sunday morning, in a moment, in a flash, I would still be here. Just walk down here. This can be a defining moment for you that after this, everything is different. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. After this, everything is brand new. Thank you, Lord. I'll wait on you a little bit. Jesus has been waiting on you. This is your moment for change. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone else? It's all right. You can walk down here. If you know that your brother, sister, cousin, husband, wife, they just might need a little nudge, just grab them by the hand and walk them down here. This is what the church is for. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, here's what I need. I need everybody who's down here, I need one of the saints praying with them. If, they're, if nobody's praying with them, I want some, one of the saints praying with them. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Fred and Anna, don't leave anybody alone. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, mothers. Don't leave anybody alone. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Can anybody put your hands together right now? He loves this is what we're here for. Oh, he Thank you, Jesus. Now, here's what I want everybody else to do while they're praying. I just, can you just do something for me? And I know we've been here for a while. I just want you just to worship God. Just worship God. The Bible says that when one, when one 
repents, just one, that all of heaven rejoices. I believe the least we could do is worship right now as heaven is being increased. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Could you just close your eyes for me? Could you close your eyes? Could you lift your hands and just worship God for just a while? Just a little while. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you don't mind, it, could I pray for you? Is that all right? We have seen many great things this morning. God has done exactly what he said he would do, and that show up. Yes, Lord. Save, deliver, and set free. Amen? But you might know people who are at home right now. People who are not here right now. People who you're believing God for. Anybody believe in God for people? Yes. Amen. I want to pray for those people right now. And I want to pray that God puts an anointing on you so that when you speak to them on the phone, that that anointing will come straight out of your voice, right through that phone, and set them free. That when you're in their presence, that, that they will be set free, that the same spirit, same anointing that's right here in this room follows you to where you go yes, Lord. and is right there with them. Amen. Would you pray with me, Lord, in the name of Jesus? Lord, I thank you for your power, your presence, your anointing. Lord, your gifting right now, Lord, on your people. I thank you, Lord, that you will pour it on them like oil, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for how you've restored them, how you've renewed them, how you've delivered them and set them free, Lord. Lord, and I thank you right now that the miracle that's taking place in here will be the miracle that takes place out there, Lord. I thank you that as they go home, Lord, that when they walk into that home, that glory would shoot through that home, Lord. Lord, like a sunrise coming over a hill, Lord, I thank you that all darkness will be removed in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for your blood, Lord, that flows, Lord, that it will flow over us, Lord. Lord, that when we speak to people on the phone, Lord, that when we get in front of our loved ones, Lord, that that same blood would flow, Lord, and change their lives, Lord. Give us the words to say, Lord. Give us wisdom to speak it, Lord. Lord, give us courage, Lord. Lord, to get past whatever obstacle, Lord, that lays there for somebody else to get saved, Lord, I thank you right now for people to be delivered, Lord, in a special way, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that today, Lord, was a defining moment for many individuals, Lord. Lord, that this day would continue, Lord, as we leave this place, it would continue, that you would continue to do what it is that you do best and show up and be God for us, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your power, your presence, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, could you repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your sacrifice. Lord God, my Father, I thank you for sending your Son to die for my sins. Lord, against you and you only have I sinned and done wicked in your sight. But Lord, I thank you for the cross. I thank you for the blood. I thank you for the empty tomb. Lord, I thank you for life, 
for resurrection, resurrection. for peace, peace, for joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in the Holy I thank you for your Holy Spirit. For your Holy Spirit. And I thank you for the life that I now live, life now live. in you. Yes. Now, if you pray that simple prayer, I want you to put your hands together. You on on your way to great things. I want you to continue to think big. Today is Resurrection Sunday. Enjoy it with your families. Enjoy.